The Sony PlayStation 4 has officially arrived. Originally codenamed Neo, this is Sony's latest and most powerful gaming console to ever be released. Not only can it output 4K HDR movies and TV shows, but it can also output 4K HDR games. The first mainstream gaming console to do so. What that means is that you're going to want to make sure you have a 4K HD TV before you even consider picking this console up for about $400. And I will say this before you unbox and set this device up, the biggest disappointment with the PS4 Pro in my opinion is the lack of a 4K Blu-ray player which is present on the cheaper Xbox One S. The reason they didn't include the 4K drive from what I've read was because there wasn't enough space for it and Sony really just wants to focus strictly on games. Not so much on entertainment which is what the Xbox is going for, I think that's a poor excuse but I can't complain too much because this is a gaming console and it can actually play 4K games. So we can start the unboxing by slicing off the single piece of tape holding the top portion of the box together and fold open the flaps as with the PlayStation 4 Slim which we recently unboxed, hint links below in the description, there is one big white box inside and inside that box is two smaller boxes or compartments. The first item is the PS4 Quick Start Guide, which we don't need to really take a look at as I'll walk you through the setup process. The smaller compartment features a power cable and a micro USB charging cable for charging the included DualShock 4 controller. Next we have an HDMI cable, which is capable of outputting a 4K resolution, and there is a PS4 DualShock 4 controller here as well. Now we can pull out the PS4 Pro and remove all of the protective plastic and cardboard. We'll see a design that is very reminiscent of a PlayStation 4 and or PlayStation 4 Slim, just bigger in almost every single way. There's an extra layer added to the console, so instead of two layers, we now have three due to the extra hardware necessary to run 4K games. The very last items that actually fell out while getting access to the PS4 Pro here include a card that details some freebies associated with the PlayStation Plus subscription and some very inexpensive earphones for chatting with your friends. It's good to see some freebies included in the box, but chances are you'll probably want to opt in for some higher quality buds. So if we take a closer look at the PS4 Pro, we'll see up front between the layers is a disk drive that unfortunately cannot play 4K Blu-rays. There's also a very slim power and eject button underneath the disk drive. On the right hand side, we also have two USB ports which are very close together, unlike the PS4 Slim which they were kind of spread apart from one another. I definitely like how they are nearby one another for aesthetic purposes. As for ports on the rear of the device, from left to right, we have a power port, HDMI out port, auxiliary port, digital out or optical port, another USB port, and a LAN or Ethernet port. So like I said earlier, the setup process is very straightforward. After you connect your PS4 Pro to your TV and power it on, you'll need to use the included micro USB cable to connect your controller to the console. You'll then need to select your language to begin setting up your internet connection, which in my case will be a wireless connection. You'll be asked to connect a PlayStation camera if you have one. Then comes time to set the time and the date. You will then need to adjust power save settings to your liking, but for the purpose of making this video more streamlined, I just decided to keep all the settings default. The very last thing you will need to do is accept the user agreement, and from there, you will have completed the setup of the PlayStation 4 Pro. It's that easy. So the PS4 Pro costs $400 and does not include any games with your purchase. That means you're going to be spending around $460 with everything said and done, unless you have some PS4 games already or buy a game that isn't terribly new or from a big developer. You can also take advantage of the free games with PlayStation Plus, which you do get a 14 day free trial of, but it does cost about $60 a year. So it's a pricey little console, but that's really what you can expect to see until 4K becomes more widely adopted. With that said, I'm using the PS4 Pro on a 4K Vizio TV and content looks great. It's going to really depend on the game you are playing and whether it's been updated to support the PS4 Pro is all it takes is a software update to uh, improve the visuals. Now, if you don't have a 4K TV, you can still reap the benefits of the PlayStation 4 Pro as games will be able to render higher and more consistent frame rates. Uh, there's increased environmental and character model detail, improved overall visual quality and other related visual enhancements. Do I recommend this console if you don't have a 4K TV? No, but there are some other benefits besides just the improved resolution. 
This is the PlayStation 4 Pro, an evolution of the PlayStation 4 generation platform. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the system in a comment down below and whether you think it's worth $400. The console would make for a pretty sweet holiday gift, so we'll leave a link to the Amazon listing of this product down below in the description in case you want to just, you know, study up on the specs or purchase this product. If you enjoyed this video, thumbs up would be appreciated. Maybe subscribe if you're brand new. As always, I'm BoHD from PhoneDog.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.